Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at finding relative extrema given the graph of a function. So first of all, what are relative extrema? The points on a graph when the graph changes its increasing, decreasing, or constant behavior are called the relative extrema. And notice that extrema ends in an A. That indicates that it's a plural, so I guess technically the plural, uh, the singular word would be extremum, which is kind of weird, but when you see the words that we use, You'll, you'll recognize these words. So minimum, the plural for minimum is minima, which is also kind of weird. But anyway, um, so one type of extrema is a relative minimum. A relative minimum, which we're gonna define by the ordered pair x sub m comma f of x sub n, occurs on an interval x sub one comma x sub two, which contains that x value x sub m, when for all x in the interval, the output for x sub m is smaller than or equal to all other output values within that interval. So what does that mean? It, well, it's a minimum, right? So we could have a curve like this, wee, and this right here would be considered, the one point would be considered a relative minimum. Um, do we have any other relative minimums? We do. We have one right somewhere along here would be another relative minimum. So these two things would be called relative minima. So while they're not the smallest, the, the lowest point on the graph within a neighborhood, within some interval, right? So we could start it here. One interval could be here for this relative minimum and the other one could be here. Those would be relative minima. On the contrary, we could have a relative maximum, which I'm defining as x sub n comma f of x sub n. And those would occur on the intervals x sub one comma x sub two, which contain x sub n, when for all x in the interval, that value is larger than or equal to all the other output values in that interval. So looking at that gorgeous graph that I drew, we would see some relative maxima. There would be one here, and there would be one right here. So these would be considered relative maxima, because we can find an interval of numbers where those values would be larger than all other values, or equal to, but in this case, larger than, within that interval. And relative extrema are always written as ordered pairs. So when we're writing the relative extrema, we would write them as ordered pairs. Let's look at some examples. So first we're given the graph of g of x. g of x is given by the equation 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. I see a relative maximum right here, and that relative maximum will be at the ordered pair negative 1, negative 3. So relative maxima would be negative one, negative three. Here we have a relative minima. That relative minima would be at zero, negative four, right? Because that negative four is uh, lower than all other points near it. So we would have zero, negative four is our relative minima. Okay, here are two examples. I encourage you to pause the video, see if you can come up with the extrema for each graph, and then check back with me. Okay, so for the first graph, what'd you come up with? Well, this one only has this one ex relative extrema, and that would be a maximum, right? It's higher, the, the y value is larger there than at any other point near it, in fact, the entire graph, um, and that would be the ordered pair two comma one. There's no relative minima here because the graph doesn't ever come back up ever. Okay, what about this graph here given by g of x? Well, it looks like we have a relative minima here and a relative minimum here. So we have one at the ordered pair 0, 1, and another relative minimum at 2, comma 1. Do we have any relative maxima here? Yeah, we do right here. Um, so that's the point 1, 2. That point, we can find a little neighborhood around it, a little interval of numbers, where that point has a larger y value than any other y values near it, or g of x values, I should say. This has been a video on finding relative extrema. Thank you for stopping by.